good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. Welcome to the entire webinar series, Inspired Squad Mathematics Applications. Now, we've called it Inspired Squad Mathematics Applications. Do you know why? Because right now, you, that's you, are very busily preparing for the WACE Maths Applications exam, uh, which of course is very inspiring. Now, the word inspire also appears in the name TI Inspire, which is a portable computer algebra system which you are expected to be able to utilise in the second section of your exam. Now, the TI bit of that stands for Texas Instruments, and guess what? They're the guys who have provided the funding for this program. Uh, so we're going to be using that to, uh, to illustrate over the next five weeks um, the, uh, the many maths concepts that you need to be revising at this point in time. Now, my name is Brian Laddin, and I'll show you a scary photo if you like. Uh, there we go. Now, I uh, am a math teacher, and well, I've been doing that sort of business for about 30 years now. Um, and uh, presently, I'm teaching some maths and science subjects at a TAFE college um, in an engineering diploma. I've also been involved with quite a lot of teacher training uh, and in the last few years, I've hosted and presented many of these webinar-type things. Uh, this one, however, is the first time that such a program has been extended to include students. It's previously just been for teachers. So uh, now, now including students, which I think is an absolutely wonderful thing, and I hope we can get to do some more of that in the future. But, uh, but you guys, you're the pioneers. Um, so well done. In fact, well done, um, well done on a, on a wider scheme. I, I think it's absolutely vital if you're doing your year 12 now and probably getting ready to uh, uh, to advance to the next stage of your life, um, whether that be at a university level or out in the workforce or whatever you're doing. I think it's absolutely vital that you um, seek out ideas beyond just your school and you've taken that step by enrolling in this webinar series. So very good, and I certainly wish you well in your studies and exam preparation. You don't want to be hearing too much from me, though. Um, the main deal for the series, uh, there's this fellow here, um, Jody Crothers. He will be your main teacher for the series of webinars. Um, you'll hear from Jody only briefly tonight, though, because... Um, Hayley, Hayley Daru, um, will be running tonight's session. Um, I'll just flick back to Jody though. Jody, Jody, I was trying to track down a little bit about him. Um, I have met Jody, Jody a few times. He's um, head teacher of maths at uh, Safety Bay Senior High School. Um, and you can see here his photo from his, his uh, Twitter page which has got his back to the camera. So, I don't know, very obscure sort of fellow. But what I thought was interesting here, yep, TI National, maths teacher, TI National instructor and mathematics humorist. Hmm, exactly what does that mean? I don't know. Um, and here we have his, his YouTube page. And you can see that Jody has worked a lot with um, making little videos to assist students in how to um, basically use their calculator to um, to solve problems for their mathematics applications course. But most of what you're going to... Oh, here's a fellow here. Stephen Julian, um, he's, he's teaching the other course at the moment, the Mathematics Methods course. I understand you're enrolled in the Applications course. Um, some students are actually doing both. Stephen teaches at Mandurah Catholic College and he is running the webinars on the Mathematics and Methods course on the Mondays. But who you want to hear from first is Hayley Daru, and I'm sure you can read there. Um, Hayley is a very experienced teacher. She's passionate about, um, about student engagement, and she developed a program um, that she called Boot Camp, um, that's been very, very successful with her students over the last few years, and that's put her basically on the, the tour circuit 
and people have been grabbing her at various universities, various conferences, both in Australia and you can see they're also in, uh, in Texas. Uh, so she's been asked to present at conferences and share her ideas on student engagement and particularly targeting student understanding and addressing misconceptions in their learning. She's very, very clever and has a beautiful presentation style. And uh, I've, I, I, I've used her material quite a lot with teaching my own classes and uh, showing them some of the clever things that they can do on their calculator and setting up calculator files that they're allowed to take into their exam, which I think is giving them just a little bit of an edge, and you guys too. So um, I'm going to hand across to Hayley now, so rather than listen to me, I'll let her tell you all about it. Ah, thank you, Brian. What a nice introduction that was as well. Um, you should see my screen in just a moment. It's looking great there at the moment. Go. Sure, it's on the way. There we go. Can you see it hey, now? I should, have said, I should have said also to students um, that as they log in, we encourage, we encourage interactivity. Um, could they please use the question and answer uh, panel that they should see on the right of their screen? Um, so type in their questions and send them please to all panellists. Um, there's not only um, Hayley and Jody and myself, but other teachers are online at the moment lurking and waiting to pounce upon your questions to answer them. So please use the Q&A throughout the presentation uh, and send to all panellists. And just another couple of things. As for the list of attendees, you will only see your own name. That's because you only have the privilege to see your own name. I, however, see all of you, and there are quite a lot of you, so you can't hide from me or the other panellists, but there, <laughs> don't think that you're logged in alone. There are, there are many, many online. <laughs> and also, as you see Hayley's screen now, there's a double arrow to the top right of her screen. If you click on that, it will um, full screen her screen onto yours, but if you want to go back to the WebEx uh, center in the top center of your screen there's a pull down tab uh, with an option that says return and that will take you back to the Webex center where you can ask your questions and hopefully receive answers. Have I explained that all well Hayley? That sounds fantastic Brian I think I think we're ready to go and as Brian said uh, if you have any questions at all please uh, do type them into that Q&A and send them across to all panellists because no doubt if you have a question, there's other people with the same question and I can't see those questions while I'm talking, uh, but the other very clever uh, Texas Instruments trainers can, can address your questions while I'm chatting away. So hello everyone, uh, I'm talking to you from Melbourne. So it's a little bit later over here, it's 10 past 7 p.m. Uh, but I understand that you've just had a probably a long day at school and now you've logged on to a webinar, so I'm very impressed. Uh, as it says on the screen, session one really is CAS basics, so what I hope to cover in today's session will set you up to attend the other uh, webinars that are happening in the next couple of weeks, and each webinar in the next few weeks will address a certain area of study. Uh, my session today is a more general overview of the different files and basically uh, giving you the information you need to be able to use your calculator properly in the exam. So I teach a, a VCE subject, which is the Victorian curriculum subject, uh, where we use the same handheld calculators that you use and our students also sit an exam where they need to use these uh, calculators. So I'm very passionate about teaching students how to use them properly because if you know how to use your uh, Inspire handheld in that exam, you have the edge over other students. So let's go back to a very familiar page. Uh, everybody should recognise this page. It's what you usually see when you turn your calculator on. And you might not have noticed before, but there's a scratch pad up here and then there's all these other documents. Now, I tell my students to ignore the scratch pad because what we want to do is get really good at creating documents in our calculator and different types of documents. So I would altogether avoid the scratch pad if I were you and we're just going to focus on uh, making different types of documents. Now you can see here we have new document, my documents, recent documents, 
the current document and settings and we'll go through each of these things. Uh, now, if you have a look down the bottom, what you can see here are the different types of documents. They are the same uh, options that will come up if you click on new document. Ooh, let's just get out of that. Sorry, I was in another file. So if we click on new document, this is a good start. There we go, new document. Uh, we'll see these options here. And you'll notice that they're the same icons that were at the bottom of your uh, home page. So whether you want to click on that one or press new document is really up to you. But what we've done here is inserted a calculator page. And you will have used this page before. Normal math stuff happens on this page. You can add and multiply numbers. But much cooler stuff happens on this page as well. So we need to be very familiar with some really cool functions in this menu here. And I'm going to, uh, sorry, I get quite quick on my handheld. I press menu there. And then you can click either number one or number two or three to get into here. Or you can use your um, keypad over here and click down, 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 etc. What I want to show you is the solve function, which no doubt you've uh, probably seen before. And we can solve various equations using the solve function. You might uh, be given a linear equation that's something like 3x plus 2y minus 5 equals 0. And you might want to transpose that equation. So not only can you uh, solve equations, you can use solve to transpose equations. So what we've done there is uh, transpose that linear equation there. Or of course, you can use the solve function to solve for unknowns. So you might have an equation like 4m minus 5 equals 7. And of course, the syntax that we're using there is to put comma m because we're solving for m. Whereas up here, we put comma y because we were solving for y. So that's a pretty handy little function in our menu. And there's other really cool functions in here as well. Uh, particularly when we get to uh, fraction tools. So we can um, separate a fraction expression into a proper fraction. And you might even use the expand command if you wanted to expand an expression. That's really useful as well. So you don't need the comma. Ooh, we do need a multiplied sign though there. So if you're getting, um, maybe you've been doing something in class and you've been getting a little error like that, it's always a good idea to ask maybe a teacher, or maybe you can ask in the Q&A box now what the error means, because often you're just maybe missing some syntax on your calculator. Maybe you've forgotten the comma, uh, or maybe you didn't put a multiplication sign like I did there. So it's always a really good idea to ask. And the great thing about your calculator active exam is that you can also take in your notes with your calculator active exam. So you can have little notes to yourself, and you should have little notes to yourself um, about the different things that you can use your calculator for. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is add another document, uh, sorry, another page to this current document. And I might like to uh, save this document. So I don't know whether you've done this before, but you can actually save these files. So on my handheld, I'll press Control and Save. And much like on a computer, it will ask me what I would like to name this file. So I might like to call it webinar, let's call it webinar 99, and 999 maybe. And if you save that document, then on the top of your handheld, your document will now have a name. And so we can come back and find this document later on and, and we certainly will do that. So I'd like to add another page and I could go back to my home page and do this, which I think is what a lot of students do, but there's a nice little shortcut here, control I. Control I is the shortcut for insert, and I might like to insert a graph page. And what we can see is that these pages are page 1.1 and 1.2, and I can get between those pages by pressing Control left and Control right. And if I want to see how many pages I have open, I can press Control up. And Control up will show me all the pages in my document. So that if there's lots and lots of pages, I can then scroll between them from this view and then I can just go back into one of my documents, uh, the one that I want to use. Okay, so graph page. Now, this function f1 of x is function uh, notation. So 
you've probably gotten used to by now working out that you can just type in uh, your equation if it is equal to y, you can type in your equation like that. So the f of x bit is the function of x bit that sort of replaces y. Um, but did you know that you can in fact uh, actually type in an equation in terms of y and x? So if you want to do that, you can hit menu and then you can hit graph entry edit and you should see relation. Now, if you're not seeing relation uh, on your handheld, that might be because you don't have the recent software. So we might just have a look at what the recent software is or how we work out if we have the recent software. So hit the home key. And if you go into uh, settings here, and you go into status, now you of course can hit the shortcut keys here. So you could just click the number five and then click the number four. And you can see here underneath the batteries thing that the version of the software that I have is 4.2.0. And this relation uh, function so that I can actually type in relations is new in, in the new software. So if your software is out of date, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. You don't need to rush off and get a new calculator. You can just update your software uh, online. You can do that or you can ask your teacher to connect their updated software uh, to your handheld and, and connect and transfer the, the new software. So um, if that's a problem for you, then um, I'm sure you can ask in the Q&A now and they'll be happy to uh, uh, explain how you can do that. All right, now this next thing I'm going to show you is really important. My students, when I get them at the start of year 12 and they're at, on their home page, maybe they've gone in to look at settings, they always go down here to get back to where they were. And what, is, what that does is it inserts an unnecessary page so we're going to click on current or press the number four for current and that will take us back to the page that we're working on. If you were on the home page and you click down here, which is a bit of a habit, uh, it inserts this unnecessary page that we don't want. So we can delete that page by going to doc and then we're going to go to uh, page layout, so number five, and we can delete our page that we don't want. There we go. Okay, so where was I? I clicked on menu. I was going to graph entry edit and rather than typing in a function, I'm going to type in a relation. And what we can do here is actually type in uh, a relation in relation form. There we go. So we didn't actually need to transpose that equation to then type it in like we would have if we were using the function form. Okay, so what we have here are two straight lines and because their gradients are not the same, uh, I know they will intersect down there somewhere, but I can't quite see what, where. So there's a few ways we can alter our window here. We can of course hit menu and go into window, which is number four, and we can go into window settings and change our window settings manually. So adjust the X min and the X max, but we're not gonna do that today. Because a little trick is to hover with your um, touchpad here, hover over one of the mins or maxes on the axis and double click in there. And then we can change that value. Let's change that to 10. And we're going to press tab and tab takes us over to the uh, X max. And then we're going to press tab again. And that will take us down to the Y min. I might put in minus 20. And then press tab again. Oh, there we go. Now we have a better looking uh, graph, don't we? And then when you're finished, you can just hit escape. Okay, there we go. Now you might not know this little trick. Um, I can see both of my lines are blue and maybe I want one of them to be pink. So if you hover over the line like that and you hit control and menu at the same time, so control and menu, you will get this come up. It's control and menu on a handheld is like a right click on a computer screen if you like. So that was control and menu. And we might just change the color of this line. I want that to be pink, there we go. And look what happened. It changed the line and it also changed the color of my equation, which is really nice. Okay, so what do we need to know how to do in a graphs page? Well, we've worked out how to change the window. Let's work out how to find this point of intersection down here. So we can use the analyze graph menu, so menu, and number six, analyze graph. And we're going to find the intersection. And we're going to come over here to the left of that point, which is what lower bound means. 
And over here to the right, there we go. And what we can see here is uh, at the coordinates of the point of intersection, which is really lovely. And we can also uh, use the analyze graph function to find out axial intercepts, so our x and y intercepts. We might just do one of those. So we'll do zero is the command that we use to do that. And that's uh, so that we can find where the function is zero. Now see how it's asking me which line are you talking about? And I just need to click on this one and then it realizes I want that x-intercept. So there we go. There's our x-intercept there. And to find our y-intercept, we use the trace function. So we use graph trace, which is menu 5, 1. And then we type in any x value and it will tell us our y value or our function value down here. So if I were to type in 1 now, it would tell me the coordinate 1, negative 5. I typed in 4, it will give me the coordinate 4, 1. But of course, your y-intercept occurs when x is 0. And if I just press the up key here, it will jump to my other line and it will tell me the y-intercept there. So that's just a little intro to our graphs page, which is really uh, quite useful. If you want to get back to the function, because if you try and type in another function here, sorry, which I press tab to get there, you'll see that I'm seeing the relation screen come up again and um, some people get a little bit stressed. Oh, where's my function menu gone? You just hit menu and graph entry edit and change it back into function and then you'll see your function uh, entry line there. So don't don't get too stressed if, you, uh, if you're seeing the wrong menu. Just go menu, graph entry edit and then you can choose out of these two here which is really nice. Of course, uh, with your relations you can also uh, graph in equations and it, it, uh, relationships like that and shade parts of your screen. But I might come back to this if we have time. I'd like to get to some other documents. So our little shortcut for inserting another document was Control I. There we go. We've done calculator. We've had a look at graphs. Might jump down here to lists and spreadsheets. So lists and spreadsheets. Uh, you will have used a little bit because you do univariate and bivariate data. So let's quickly have a look at some univariate data. Let's imagine that we've asked uh, the kids in our uh, scout group or something how many pets they have. So we might uh, enter the responses in here. Just a random order of responses. There we go. Someone has four pets. Lucky duck. There we go. And there are our 11 responses and what we need to do is label this column. So up the top we might want to label that pet and of course it's quicker for me to type that on a uh, computer but you can use these little keys down here and type in pets and press enter. So we can do a few things with this data. We can uh, go to menu and statistics and do some stat calculations here. So if we click on stat calculations, and it's obviously just one variable, and it's asking us uh, how many lists, we're saying one, and our variable was pets. So if we uh, enter that information in there, what we see here is the mean and the sum and the standard deviation and the min and the max and all of this information, all of the stat calculations have been worked out for us uh, just with a couple of buttons. So that was menu, stats, stat calculations and one variable statistics. And then when we did that we had to tell it, uh, tell the handheld which list we were talking about. So we chose pets. Now the really cool thing about this is that once you've done uh, those calculations, if you were to insert another graph page, uh, sorry, another calculator page and now click on var, all of this information is actually stored in here. So um, automatically all of these stats are stored in your variable list and so if we wanted to uh, click on the mean, we can just bring up the mean in the calculator page just like that and in fact we could even bring up a whole list of the pets and it will uh, list the data that we had in there which is really useful if you want to check your data. So if you've listed some data in a, uh, a column Often it's quite a, quite a lot of data and it's difficult to check if all your values are there. You can just hit the var key, choose the list and it will come out in a nice little set like that. If we 
Insert another type of page, so control I, and this time I'm going to insert this data and statistics page. What I can actually do is have a look, I just need to click down here and say I want it to be pets, I can have a look at my responses there. Obviously they're discrete values because no one has 1.7 pets. And what we can see is a plot there of our uh, responses or our data. And if we go into menu and plot properties, uh, sorry, plot type, we can actually change that into a um, box and whisker plot and hover over here and see our median and our min and our Q1, etc. It's probably not the best box and whisker plot I've ever produced, but you get the hint. I'm going to move on now to some bivariate data and I want to show you how to insert a new problem because what we can see here if I press control and up, is I've got quite a few pages open. And as we saw when I hit the VAR key, I had quite a lot of quite a lot of things defined in here. So I don't sort of want to get myself confused. And this is a really good tip if you're in an exam and you're halfway through a question and maybe you've stored some data in there or you've done some working out and you want to move on to another question, but you don't want to lose all of this information. So you don't want to delete all of this you actually just want to insert a new problem. So we can hit doc and go to uh, insert, so doc key and then number four. And we don't want to insert a new page. We've been, we've been doing this with control I. What we want to do is insert a new problem. Okay, so what sort of problem do I want? Let's, let's enter it with some spreadsheet. All right, now what can we see here? We can see that this is numbered 2.1. And this was numbered 1.5. So we actually have problem one and problem two. And with my year 12 kids, they, you can even set this up before you go into your exam. So you could create a whole new uh, document. If you want to create a document, just make sure you save this one first. So save the document. And then the shortcut for a new document is Control N. And so we can insert a new document. And what you can actually do is insert all of these uh, problems before you walk into your exam. So you can actually insert problem one, problem two, problem three, problem four, and get your calculator all um, set up before you even walk into your exam. Walk into your exam with your calculator like this with separate problems. Um, you might even want to be cheeky and save the file as exam as you walk in, I, but you're allowed to do I, that. That's so. brilliant, Kayleigh. I think that's absolutely <laughs> and, A little bit cheeky, certainly, but that's all right. <laughs> and certainly it gives the students an edge. Yeah, you know, that's the whole mm. idea. Get ahead of the, mm. get ahead of the other. Mm. Yeah. yeah now sorry, I just managed I'll to close. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. I just managed to uh, <laughs> close my other document. I did that the other night, but it doesn't matter. We're going to insert a new, uh, a new problem here and look at some data. Now what I might look at, in fact I have something, here's something I prepared earlier, uh, was the number of hours studied and test scores. And of course this is just a pretty basic example of some bivariate data and we need to determine which one we think is independent and dependent and uh, then type them in. And what I've done, ooh, there we go, what I've done here is uh, type those numbers in here. So number of hours and there you go, three all the way down to the ninth student which is um, two hours with a test score of 85 and all the way back up there. And I've labelled my columns up here uh, hours and tests. Now if you're wondering how I split my page like that, let's have a look. I'm just going to insert a new page and if we, um, there we go, if we entered some uh, data like this and we then wanted to uh, just type in hours one and test one, there we go. If we inserted some data in there like that and I won't use this data because it's pretty silly and I wanted to split my page doc again, this is the secret key up here, doc. We can go to page layout and we can actually uh, select the split so we could split our page uh, vertically or horizontally or into three bits or even four bits down here, which seems a bit extreme. And we can see um, another page over here, which is really nice. So we can just check here. Uh, 
is all my data in right? It's a nice little thing to check. Let's see what test one was. 50 and 90, 50 and 90 looks right. So that's a nice little trick um, to use as well. But let's go back to this. We've entered our data and now we'd like to have a look at it. So of course we press Control I and we're going to insert a data and statistics page. And this time we have a dependent variable and an independent variable. So I'm just going to click on here and uh, hours was my independent variable and my dependent variable was test. And there's our data right there. Now let's have a look at some cool stuff that we can do. Um, you've probably been shown how to insert a regression line in there. And if you haven't, I'll just show you in a minute. But another really cool function is that you can uh, insert a movable line here. So you can actually try and fit a line to your data um, and I probably wouldn't be doing this in your exam, but this is a really good way to try and understand what uh, regression is, of course. And then if you're wondering what least squares regression is, well, we can actually uh, add the least squares um, residuals here. So what we can do here is add the squares and move that line around. And what we're trying to do is fit a line in there that has the least number, so we want this sum of squares to be as low as it can go. Now, I'm sure you could all do a much better job than what I'm doing here, because I'm trying to talk and explain and think and move this at the same time, but um, let's see how low we can get that. Oh, that's looking a bit better, isn't it? Oh, oh. There we go. Absolutely now, beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. beautiful sum of squares that really, really makes sense when you see that. Yeah, because often um, I think people just don't really know what least squares means. <laughs> why why but, do we uh, square the numbers, Hayley? Why do we square them? Why do we Why do we leave that for another lesson? And I'm just going to get <laughs> rid of it because I'm running out of time. Uh, hang on a second. We obviously square them so that they're uh, they're positive. Hang on a second. Let's just get rid of this. Hide residual squares. And then we're just going to go into actions and uh, remove that movable line because, of course, we don't want that uh, movable line in there. What we really want is to insert a regression line. So let's uh, go into analyze and regression. And these two are um, really the same thing. It just depends if you want your uh, gradient and um, X to be at the front or the other way around. It's really same. a matter Different of preference. Spelling. But yeah, that's exactly right. And there is our uh, line in there, which is really nice. That's um, looking a lot better than my line did, I think. And of course, if we come back into the page that had all of the test scores in it, which is this one over here, and we hit the uh, menu and go into stats and stat calculations, of course, this time we want, uh, well, we can choose linear regression if we want to choose linear regression from this menu, or we can go into our two variable statistics and choose hours and test scores. And then, I'm just going to write over some data already. And then, at, like we had before, we've sort of got all of this information here. Uh, and we can find our um, correlation coefficient and things in there as well, I think, somewhere down there. Um, and of course we can, here we go, go into that and find our linear regression from this menu as well. So hours and tests. Just me, I'm gonna write over it. And there we go, we can see the same equation. So you've seen here uh, 2.8 as our gradient and our um, y-intercept or our, in this case, I think it was hours. Uh, test results intercept, sorry. Oh, that looks a little bit different there. What's going on? Oh, it's just rounded it up, sorry. Now let's try and fix our settings here. If we go into our settings, that's what the problem was. So make sure your calculator settings in your graph page, and I did that a bit quickly, my, apologize. my, my apologies. In your graph page, hit menu and settings and make sure your float in here is up nice and high. We don't want it to be too short. Uh, and then Tab, 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 make default there. There we go. That's looking a lot better. There we are. So what we can see here is that our uh, regression line appearing on the graph is matching what we're seeing in uh, this page over here. 
Now, if you're doing what I'm doing and you've got this annoying page that we don't really want, remember that you can go into page layout and let's just delete that page. That's a bit better. So now we've got this nice little problem in a couple of different pages where we've got our data and our, our plots there, which is really nice. Okay, so with just not long to go, I'll save the best till last. I want to show you another type of page that you can create. So we're going to uh, insert a new problem. Let's insert a new problem. We can all practice that. And notes page. This is probably the, well, not probably. This is the best thing that this calculator can do. You can type notes to yourself. So you might um, want to type some notes to yourself to take into your exam instead of writing them. So hello, uh, hello WA. Um, you can type whatever you want. Of course, it takes a little bit longer on a handheld, but you've got a few weeks until your exam. So you can type some notes in there. And uh, we're going to have a look at how we can program our uh, CAS, our handheld, to work out uh, an amount that we could uh, ha get from investing in a, in a compound interest um, situation using the compound interest formula. So what I've done over here is inserted a notes page and I've put a little picture in there. And we're going to uh, make a little program that will work out what A is, the amount that we have when we've invested a principal amount uh, in an interest uh, in, an, in an interest account, in a savings account. So here's our scenario. How much money will you have if you invest principal amount of $7,500 into an account with an interest rate of 6% and for which the interest is compounded monthly? So if we come back to our little picture over here, we know that that's our uh, formula. And so in a notes page, what we can do is type words, hello, or we can type maths. And if we're going to type maths, we need to press Control M. And Control M, oops, Control M, uh, will, of course, insert a math box. And it comes up on the screen with little red dotted lines around it. And if we're going to use this formula, then we need to define our principal amount and our uh, interest rate and our N value, et cetera. So let me just, there we go. Okay, so we need to define P, our principal amount. Now for the purpose of this example, it was $7,500. And the key that I've just used there is the assign key. So uh, I didn't use an equals there. I'll show you again with R. I typed in R and then I used control and this assign key. And that's just like define or store, um, but it's a bit of a shortcut. So we're going to define or store or assign our interest rate to be 0 0.06. And our principal amount was, uh, of course, $7,500. And the time, we're going to need that. Well, I think the question said we're investing for five years, but we can come back and check that. And then our interest was being compounded monthly. So that's how many times our interest is being compounded a year. There we go. All right, so we've got P, we've got R, we've got T, we've got N, and we've assigned those. So if you use the assign key, then it should, um, once, once you click enter, we should see that uh, green number come up there. If you've used an equals key, Instead, then you won't see that. So that's how you know. Go back and put the assign key in there. Okay. Now, our formula is that the amount is equal to, so we're going to assign it to be P times 1 plus get our fraction key up here, R over N. There we go, R over N, and it was to the power of power of n times t. And we just need to make sure we put a multiplication sign in between the n and the t. Um, if it was true, if it was a number and a t, like 8t, then the handheld kind of assumes that it's 8t. But if you type in nt, then it sort of thinks nt is a whole other variable. So make sure there's a multiplication sign in there. All right, now that's looking pretty good, I think. P, yeah. Now let's press enter and see some magic happen. Oof, okay, wow. Now. What we've got there is 
the amount that we'll have if we invest $7,500 in an account with an interest rate of 0 0.6, uh, sorry, with, of 6% for uh, five years where the interest is compounded monthly. Hmm. So we could save this. Remember, we can save the document, go control save, and you can call it interest. You can call it whatever you want. And that will save in your handheld. We'll show you how to go and retrieve that in a second. And if you got into your exam and there was a question about um, an account where maybe you had a principal amount of $42,000 and the interest rate was 7%, look well, what's happening as I change these numbers. And we invest for nine years. And this is like a little uh, dynamic page now that you can go and find in your exam and change these numbers, read the question carefully, of course, uh, change the numbers. If you can work out what N, R, P, and T are, let's say we're investing for 14 uh, years, there you go, and watch that number change, which is just so cool. Um, I know that there's uh, the finance calculator, but this is, uh, in my opinion, this is even cooler. So you can start to make these little files, and, and as we said, you're allowed to take these into your exam, which is really quite cool. So just before I leave you, um, and hand you back over, because I'm sure there's probably some questions. Let's just show you how to retrieve these files if you, um, maybe you turned your CAS off and turned it back on one day and you're trying to find this cool file that you made. Uh, so you may have noticed that there's this option here for My Documents. And if we click on My Documents, um, you'll be able to find any files that you've saved in there. So there's that webinar 999 that I created before. Um, yes, I do want to save some changes to that one. And it's going to open that file again. So we're back to that file that we created before, which is so cool. So you really just need to think of your handheld as like a mini little computer that you're taking into your exam. And uh, as I said, if you made some cool files and you're able to use them, then you've got the edge over, over the other students. So I uh, hope I wasn't too fast and I hope that you got a few little tips and tricks out of um, today's introduction session, introductory session, and I really hope that you enjoy the rest of the webinars um, over the next couple of weeks. And yeah, thanks for logging in today. I'll hand back over to you guys. Thanks, Haley. Yeah, that's quite interesting, and and I think especially especially those uh, dynamic notes pages. Um, remember last year. Um, I was teaching specialist maths, and um, one of my one of my students said, "Oh, come on! Th this is this is this procedure is very algorithmic. Um, so surely, surely you could do this on a Dynamics Notes page. Um, but you know, we're, we're about a week away from exams. I haven't got the time to write it all now. Has somebody prepared this? And I said, "Yes, yes. I think you're absolutely right. And what's more, I reckon I know." <laughs> person who would have prepared it um, and so I got onto someone through our uh, through our network Haley and um, and and uh, he had in fact prepared those pages and said yep here's the files and my students oh, fantastic. Those, yeah, yeah yeah they were just yep. absolutely my cool. students Absolute. are uh, using them now uh, heading into their exams and uh, even if you don't use them in your exam sometimes just knowing that you have them there is such a confidence booster going into your exam so yeah, it's a little bit just like having notes with you, isn't it? You know that. Um, yeah. The fact that you got your formula book, you're not worried. You're not worried about mm. oh, am I going to remember this formula or not? It's all there. Um, there yeah. is a f feature on the calculator um, that does you know the financial applications solver, um, finance solver. But I think the dynamic notes are so much better because it explains it, and particularly your graphic of the. Um, of the formula and the explanation of what all the variables stand for in there. Mm. So you've got the notes, you've got the notes there explaining what it means, and then it's just change the numbers. You can, yeah. you can almost guarantee there will be exam questions about that. You can guarantee yes. it. So there's guaranteed marks here. And students um, can also write their own notes to themselves. So if you're confused, maybe you're yeah. a student who's confused about what N is. Uh, I know with compound interest, some people get confused about, uh, you know, what, what is N? Is N um, 
you know, the number of times that it's calculated or is it the number of months? And, you know, people tend to get confused with that, but students can write their own little note to themselves in that page about what N is and, and, and other examples as well. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yep. And, of course, the most meaningful notes are the ones that you write yourself for yourself hmm. if you understand them. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Hayley. And uh, we're now going to switch across to, to Jodie, um, who is then the main teacher for this course. Uh, Hayley was just our, our, our guest presenter for the first session of the course to get you started with your, um, with your um, um, calculators. Uh, Jody will take you further into the course. Um, are, you, are you listening there, Jody? Yes, I'm listening very intently. Thank you yeah, very much. You, so um, your students are online, mate, and there's quite a lot of them. Uh, there's quite a lot of teachers in the background too. And just, just quickly, thank you for the teachers who've been answering the questions. Um, students, there have not been a lot of questions though. Um, please, can I encourage you throughout the series if you're doing the webinars live you have the advantage of asking questions live and and um, and throwing the teachers throwing the teachers into into a panic to try to answer them quickly um, so do use that of course you can watch these things um, uh, on a download afterwards this thing will be on YouTube in a couple of days time for you to download and play at your leisure but if you're attending the thing live I encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A because we've had about six teachers online um, this afternoon ready to answer your questions. Um, but Jody will be taking the rest of the course. Uh, tell us about it, Jody. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the course. Next week we're going to start with bivariate data. We're actually going to go through some exam type questions and working our way through where would you use a calculator, where's the best way to use it, and actually talking about correlation coefficients lines of best fit and how to use the functions on the calculator. It automatically produces a line of best fit and we can actually use that function on a calculator page as well. So we'll go through solving, we talk about extrapolation, the dangers of that, and causation and correlation and their relationships. Then as we work our way through, we'll cover the time series data as well and that'll be session four. Uh, we'll look at our, the various sequences Recurring sequences. We'll also have a look at the formula sheet that SCARSA provides as we go along and just have a talk about what is there for the non calculator section as well, just because some of these questions will appear in the non calculator section. Talk about the difference between the coefficient determination and the correlation coefficient. So we'll go through three or four questions during the webinar. Happy to respond to any questions about how to do things or why I'm doing things. And at the end of it, hopefully you have a better understanding of the applications course. It's the first year it's been run. I know my students are a little bit nervous because they don't have any past papers as such. So it's people's best guess. And so we're looking forward to, to the exam coming up. But we're pretty sure they'll be covering the bulk of the content in the exam and right in the middle. So we're looking forward to that sort of opportunity. Now, remind your friends, this is on. Um, if you get a chance, at Jodstar2000 is my Twitter handle, and I'll be keeping tweets and updates about the webinars as we go along, both the methods and the applications. Um, encourage your friends to, to sign up, or at least take a look at it once it's on YouTube to download. Um, thanks very much. Yes, at, at Jodstar2000. Here we are, so first session uh, for the series um, this afternoon. Hope you found that beneficial. Thank you, thank you very much to Hayley for sharing her uh, expertise in uh, in the overview there. And next week, of course, we get uh, we knuckle down more into the uh, into the actual serious subject matter of the course. Please join us again uh, then, and um, please. Please also um, look to involve in the question and answer section. You might even think between now and next Thursday some questions that you might want to ask and as soon as you log in you can hit those so that our teachers are scrambling to, uh, to respond to, uh, to your questions. So uh, all the very best and uh, enjoy your next week at school, enjoy your weekend 
and uh, hope to see you again next Thursday.